Welcome to the show. It's a chock full show tonight. Oh boy, this is yeah, this is a full one. Like, we, okay, we have a special guest tonight. We do. Our buddy Steve, that we've known him forever. He's a he's an acclaimed music critic, and he's here tonight. And like, but we've known him since we were in college. Right. Like we've known him for a long time, and we were talking about the show maybe a couple weeks ago when we knew he was going to be here. And we're like, we, I think we had like five videos. We we're definitely want to. We're brainstorming. Wanna, what videos do we want to play when? Steve's I think we here? had five videos that we wanted to show him. Yeah. And then while we were putting it together, a couple days ago, it, we're going to show you like twenty videos yeah, today. We there's, might, seriously, there's like twenty videos in this a show. Lot in here, so so we're not going to do any of the Found Footage Festival classics. Right. We're not going to start off with any of that stuff. We're going to dive into this show. Yes. Yeah. And what the show is, uh, if, you have, if it's your first time, we watch we're Nick and Joe from the Found Footage Festival. We're watching all of our VHS tapes. And we have some deep cuts tonight. And, uh, I, you know, I, one thing I wanted to address up top was that um, somebody in the, uh, we call it the message boards, um, <laughs> <laughs> for VCR Party, was like, what is the Patreon? What do you get? What's the difference between $5 and $10? We are supported by Patreon.com. It helps us keep the lights on here mm -hmm. at VCR Party Headquarters. And um, the, what Patreon is, it's kind of like Kickstarter, except you're just chipping in 5 bucks a month, 10 bucks a month, if you like the show. Yeah. If you get that much enjoyment out of our four episodes uh, a month, then uh, and you think it's worth 5 bucks a yeah. month, chip in if uh and what it is is if the five dollar a month you're gonna get bonus stuff like um we we do uh, messages on there we posted like um the eyes have it you know we, we played oh, yeah, that yeah, video we'll throw, yeah we'll throw you some like uh like the entire songs of like these shitty songs that we show you for 30 seconds we'll give you the entire four right. minute version when you zap because me that's on, what you want yeah right? <laughs> and when you zap me on the ass with um oh yeah with the rejuveniques yeah um we I'll had, never forget it we had the aftermath video of, of removing it and seeing just the carnage that and it just looks like hamburger meat it does, still does yeah. actually yeah even though you are vegan yeah i know the yeah. irony um <laughs> and uh at, so that's at the five dollar level and, and above at the ten dollar level you get our um, monthly bonus episode which we're calling ep yeah. mode and we did one last month uh, we're doing one again this week uh, last month we watched the entire hose plant factory footage from yeah. canada uh, and talked about crappy first jobs we had. Yeah. It was like an hour-long episode. And that was a great... I love that. I, I want to watch Host Plant again. I know. Maybe we should just watch Host Plant with Steve today. <laughs> yeah, all right. Change of plans. Um, and actually, this month, though, it was voted on, and so this week we're going to be watching the entirety of the Miss Junior America Wisconsin preteen pageant from 1987. Uh, oh. You might want to. We should watch it with Steve because, like, that, that's another donation. one. Like, because it's from Wisconsin. Yeah. Like, you probably knew some of these people. Yeah. The, yeah. Well, we'll see if he, he can yeah. extend his trip. Then uh, yeah. maybe we can do that. And then at the above levels, you get more like free found footage festival DVDs with it. If you nope. are nuts enough to donate at the fifty dollar a month level, which I think it's just Bob. Is that our fifty dollar? <laughs> I think we have two now. Do we? There's another guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We send we you. We just have that on there, just like yeah. It's but we send you a care package with like one of a kind stuff we found, all of our DVDs, exactly, signed yep. stuff, and and then you get uh, obviously all the other stuff too. So yep. if you want to chip in, we'd love to have you. Yes. It. All right. Sales pitch done. Yeah. Right. That's, That's it. it. That's it. All right. Let's bring on our first guest, Steve Hyden. He's a uh, writer. He uh, has written two books. He writes for Up Rocks. He's written for AV Club, he, uh, the Onions AV Club. Uh, Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone, you've written for Rolling Stone, right? Yeah, New York uh, Times Magazine. New York Times Magazine. Magazine. Like, he's, 
He's like, he's legit. Yeah. He went to a state school in Wisconsin. I know. And he's done all this shit. We're basically doing a public <laughs> access show. Steve is an author who's Steve's written like, two books. Oh, um, we're, we're, oh, we have so much music stuff to show him too. And just like, yeah. yeah. Well, we're going we're gonna to show him some jingles. I want him to critique them. I'm, I'm excited about this one. Stay line. tuned. Uh, right. Here's our special guest. Yes, all right. All right. All right. Here's there Steve. Steve. Hey. Steve. Yeah. How did we meet, hey, fellas? How did Hi, we meet? Steve. Well, um, I met you because I was writing for the school paper, and you worked uh, at the uh, school uh, movie theater. You were the projectionist. I was a projectionist. So I was like, reviewing movies. Yeah. And, I'm in, and, and uh, I remember, well, actually, we had the same math class, too. And I remember yeah. you walked in wearing a Hawaiian shirt. And I was thinking, who's this asshole wearing a Hawaiian <laughs> shirt? I don't always show up late too, wouldn't I? Yeah, I was like, oh. who's this guy think he is? I was I was Spuds McKenzie, wasn't I? <laughs> You're the original party dog, yeah. Animal. Party and, then animal. You party animal. Yeah. and then I met you because I again through the school paper, you were the editor of the Daily Chimp. And Joe right. I don't think was was he going to Eau Claire at that point? Not yet. Like no, but Mark. that was our, our humor newspaper. We started up with Mark, who some people who watch the show might know as Kenny Strasser, the yo yo expert. Yes. Yeah. So we all went to college together, University of Wisconsin, Eau Claire in the nineties. And yeah, you were the. What did you? What were you at the paper? The editor or the? I became music the critic? editor at some yeah. point, but like at the, you know, I was just a cub reporter. I was a freshman reporter yeah. when, right. I, when I met you guys. Well, and I the, worked my way up. I think one thing that we've all bonded over is just how much television we watched as kids. I mean, you. Uh, I think you I think rivaled you, me. you had us beat. Yeah. You. Yeah. You, you, yeah well, I was a latchkey kid. You know, you. You're, you're, you're a latchkey, right? Yeah, that's how I identify myself. Yeah, <laughs> my parents stay together. You got your parents are like married. My, yeah. my parents got divorced when I was two, so I was raised by a single mom. Raised by a single mom, and also like you know, must see TV on NBC. I and, mean, uh, yeah, exactly. And you, a, you know, a, anything that was on primetime television in the eighties. Yeah, I just would watch you know the three hour block. You have an encyclopedic m memory of. TV and music. And yeah. Weren't you saying that you would read the almanacs, the Roger Ebert almanacs or something, or the Rolling yeah. Stone almanacs? Yeah, like, well, yeah, like, well, yeah, the Roger Ebert Home Companion. That was like, you oh, know. Oh, yeah. You read that big... every single year? Yeah, absolutely. Well, that <laughs> you was, read you reviews know. of movies that you hadn't even seen. It was, you know, I was like, you guys, you knew what you were into when you were kids. Yes. You were into videos, you were into comedy. Yeah. And I was into writing, I was into, you know, film and music, and I was into criticism and. Uh, you know, at that time, it was kind of unique to see someone on TV talking about movies. You know, and Roger Ebert was yeah. the rare guy doing that. So yeah, yeah I would yeah, I just, it was so weird. Yeah, I would my, my I would say, Mom, take me down to the grown-up section of the library. I just want to read encyclopedias about movies. Yeah. And I'm gonna go for the one career where this will maybe <laughs> pay off. You and it found worked. It. You it worked. found it. Yes. So All far, right. so good. All right, let's let's dive in. Yeah. All right, this first one. You're a music critic. Mm -hmm. You've written for Pitchfork too, right? I have Pitchfork. Um, so we're gonna show you three mu uh, jingles uh, from local TV okay. commercials. We've been obsessed with jingles lately. It's been a thing. Like for people watching this, like you've you've seen all of these jingles. But I'm just gonna play him my three favorites, and just I want you to. Use music criticism words like expressionalistic ism and postmodern. Like those Who are reads the words, a right? lot of music criticism. So. <laughs> postmodern and expressionalistic ism. Right. Can I just say quick too that like it's cool to be doing this with you guys now because like, I, I was roommates with Joe in college and he would always want to show me videos at like two in the morning. Yeah. When I was be sleeping. There's one video <laughs> in particular that I remember showing you and I couldn't find it. Like it, Grown Men. Oh There's yeah. a, there a movie called Grown Men. That's right. It, that we that we sat through and we got mad while we were watching it. But we then, saw it at the film festival. We saw it at the we film festival. Debut. Yes, exactly. And then you came over to my place one time. I played it for you. <laughs> I just wanted to go to sleep. And you kept we, falling asleep. We went out. We went out drinking. I'm like. Tired, and it's like yeah, two in the morning, and you're just like, and you're like every time it's like the warm, like pull of sleep is pulling me in, it, and, then, and then like Joe's throwing like cold water on me. Steve, like, wake you know. up, this wake part, up. There's a story with a guy part. like Jack Nicholson. Watch this yeah. terrible yeah. movie that is this interminable movie. It, it, it was a tedium movie, and like I'm a I'm a tedium guy, so <laughs> that's my thing. Um, all right, so here's the uh, the first jingle. This one, this one actually, you might get emotional over this one because oh. this one comes from Wausau. 
which oh. is close to your home state, absolutely, or your home city. Yeah. And uh, this is a dentistry video for a woman named Dr. Tammy Bailey. And this is a, a commercial. And, and people right now watching are like nodding and recognition. <laughs> uh, oh, let's see what the music. I've, I've played this, this one a lot, but I want to hear your take on it. And I and I yeah. loop it so you can hear it a few times. Oh, oh, you looped it, great. Yeah. This is gonna be a long show. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Wake up. <laughs> Making every smile count. Making Dr. Tammy Bailey dentistry. Making every smile count. I like it. So it's sort of like a 70s soft oh. rock vibe. Is that what it is? Oh. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, like kind of like not Paul McCartney, but like a Paul McCartney knockoff, like Gilbert Earl Sullivan. You know him? He does like Alone Again Naturally. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like that kind of guy. Yeah. Or like, you know. Dan Fogelberg. Well, uh, you know, you know the guy Dan who. Dan Fogelberg. Yeah. We tracked down the guy who wrote that song, who wrote the jingle. He lives in Dallas. His name is Otis, and we heard he's very arrogant, <laughs> but we heard that he is the guy. Like he's number one jingle writer. He's like the master jingle. He's the master jingle writer, writer of all of them. We tried to track him down. He won't return our phone calls. Did he have like? Okay, I wonder if he had aspirations to like make non. jingle Well, here's music. Otis's dirty little secret. What we found out is he had stock jingle melodies written and would repurpose them in different cities. Oh. So he would Dr. I hope Tammy Otis Bailey, doesn't hear you saying this because I did he's too. never going to come on the show. We're still courting him to <laughs> court, but I don't, heard... Don't speak badly of Otis. That's just a rumor. I okay. prove us wrong, Otis. Uh, so expressionalistic, uh, is that what you would say about I'm gonna that? Say Postmodern? Like, I was going to say that's sort of like a retro sunshine pop vibe. Okay, good. Right. Yeah, All right, here's it. the next one. This one comes from uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. No. Oh, uh, Oklahoma, maybe? I can't remember. Uh, but I think you'll like it. You like nice songs, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm all about it. Don't suffer in silence from the discomfort and embarrassment from ongoing hemorrhoids. Like, <laughs> Don't suffer in silence. Yeah, Kansas uh, City, I think. I think that's that's a, that Kansas City? That's, that's a Guided by Voices song, I think. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Hemorrhoid <laughs> Treatment Center. <laughs> Yeah. It does sound like that a was our, the song, title at least. That was yeah. like, a, yeah, the second half of B-1000, I think, between uh, <laughs> Smothered in Hugs and Kicker of Elves, I think. That's, I like that. That's it was song cut. number 27 on yeah. that album, right? <laughs> it was, it was. That's a good one, yeah. Do you yeah. want to hear it again? I can rewind it. I do. I like how, you know, again, in Guided by Voices fashion, you deliver the hook, yeah. and then you get out. You don't need to belabor right. it. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, we'll, we'll, listen to, we'll listen to the second half of the hook first. So there's, the kid there's two fat guys golfing, <laughs> and then cake is served at a grandmother's birthday. Does this, does this kid have hemorrhoids? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't suffer in silence from the discomfort and yeah. embarrassment oh, from ongoing hemorrhoids. Like, West Hemorrhoids Treatment Center. Don't suffer in silence. There's a little bit of a, of a you know, vibrato on center. Yeah. Too, you know what I did for Nick's birthday? I'm, I'm repeating things that people have already seen on the show. <laughs> uh, for Nick's birthday, I actually called up the Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center and I asked the receptionist to wish Nick a happy birthday on his birthday. <laughs> and, and she did it. Yeah. And, she and I think Hardness Insurance did as well. Yeah. Didn't they? Oh, no, no. Dr. Uh, Tammy Bailey. Dr. Dentistry. Tammy Bailey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too, yeah. Well, Harkness did, but I'm yeah. not playing Harkness right. for sure. Did, oh, okay. yeah. did, did they say, did, did, like, did they sing happy birthday from Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center? I don't. They were reluctant to sing, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, the receptionist at these businesses didn't want to sing for me. All right, here's the last one. I don't know where, the, I don't know where this one comes from. I think I did at one point, but I don't know right now. But this is, this is more of a hip hop vibe. Oh, you write about yeah, uh, somebody, hip hop at all? Somebody, the hippity hop? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's more like the maybe skewing towards Juggalo a little bit more. Oh, okay. okay. Somebody sent us this one. This is a, already a classic. I had the song in my head. <laughs> I got some money down, so I'm going to see the credit clown, so I don't get declined. You need the credit clown. Let's go see the credit clown. <laughs> the credit clown. Here at Auto Yes, we understand that bad things happen to good people. Come to Auto Yes, where your cash is your credit. Wait, wait, wait. I think I can get this approved. I don't think so. <laughs> Too late. Here at Auto Yes, bankruptcy, divorce, self-employed, it just don't matter. Call 275-3333 and ride today. 
Uh, uh, so that's the, yeah. yeah. You know. So the, the the part that I woke up today actually, you need the credit clown. You need the credit clown. Like that was in my head. <laughs> the woman's head. barely moving her uh, mouth while <laughs> seeing that. Well, that that jumps into my mind every so often. Like that hook from that. What, what's your take? Well, I'll just say like as a music critic, I might have to point out the problematic nature of the iconography in that video with the women. <laughs> A little bit misogynistic, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? I didn't uh, notice that. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, <laughs> he's a credit clown in more ways than one, is what I, <laughs> oh, is what I wow. might say. This but, critic has claws. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if I was writing a think piece, I might That's, lead with that. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. You know, and, yeah. what, would, what would be the lead on that? How, like, how would you start it off? Uh, well, you know, the, the line about the credit clown, yeah, yeah. and, uh, you know, some sort of like Me Too thing. I think, yeah, I think there's like a Me Too moment. Yeah. In this. Uh, did, didn't me you? Me neither in the case of that video, yeah. I would say. <laughs> did, didn't you, um, did you interview uh, Insane Clown Posse? I've never recently? interviewed them. Haven't you? I thought you were going to, weren't you? Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, there's something I'm working on that I'm hoping to talk to them for that we can't talk about. Oh, yeah? It's yeah. a top secret yeah, thing? Yeah, that's, that's oh, a secret it. thing. All right. But yeah, I'm hoping to. I've never talked to them. Because I wonder if it's a bit for them. Is that a bit, or are they are, like are they doing a bit with their insane clown posse? I mean, thing? I imagine that... you know it's a gig. I imagine like at some point they were like fucking around with it, and then it blew up into this thing. Yeah. Like twenty years later or whatever, they're right. still doing it. It's like an industry. Yeah. So. Uh, what else? We oh okay so oh. Them. this this one um so uh, you I think. One of the first times when we were living in New York, we uh, had just found a video called Lil Marky. Oh, um, And we decided to have a convention to debut it and show it to everybody. Yeah. So you flew out. Yeah. We had our friend Tom fly out. A bunch of people flew out. Spent actual Steve money. Steve Grauman <laughs> flew out. No, no, Grauman didn't come up. Oh, for no, it. he wasn't yeah. that one? No. Okay. This was before I was married. So right. I, I was very lonely. I think I was any <laughs> excuse to hang out with people. And you're like, oh, they found a VHS tape? <laughs> Great. <laughs> and uh, so the idea was that we would watch this video, I believe, five times in a row in its entire. Seven times. Seven we times. We watched it seven times that same And it's day. about a 50 minute video. Yep. We had lyric sheets printed out. We tried to contact Lil We did Marky. a coloring contest. We yeah, we got very ambitious with this thing. And by the way, like you know, I was living in Wisconsin at the time, visiting New York City. We're not going into the city. We're no. staying in uh, Nick's apartment. We're staying in Nick's apartment, yeah. watching video this Lil Marky time. video yeah. seven times, not just once. Like we watched it seven times. Right. And there was also like a sub program of like things connected to the video, like yeah. you know. Different we had, activities. Yep, yeah, we had uh, trivia. We had um, we, we called impression up contest. We called up the guy who gave us the video. That's and, right, uh, B. Hicks. Yeah, and he and yeah. he uh, told us. I don't know. He didn't have much backstory. <laughs> and he was like, I don't know. It's just a video I found. I was like, like I visit you guys here, and uh, you know, all of the big landmarks of New York I've never seen. No, because I, I never leave your apartments. Yeah, not watching you're, terrible videos. You're the in our time. windowless office with ten thousand VHS tapes in it, or in my apartment in Queens. <laughs> yeah, or, uh, but, uh, but that's the right. way it should be. Yeah. Lil Marky was a preacher, I guess, and he had a unique gimmick. And so let's just play a little bit of uh, right. Mark Fox was, was his real name. Yep. God rest his soul. Here's Lil Marky. Yep. <laughs> Take it from a Sugar Town series. <laughs> you know the Sugar Town series. <laughs> Ethnic stereotypes. But they're all white. <laughs> Extremely white. <laughs> they're being patient. He's being patient. <laughs> uh, God, yeah. like, no, I think we really started at like nine in the morning too. Ah. Those are slacks. Peace. 
I know. I know. It, it does the clapping, like, let people know the clap. patronizing asshole. I think they canned in those claps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that guy, he, he must be from China, right? Yeah, you would think <laughs> yeah. if he knows. Put the uh, microphone up to there, speaker. And we want to keep watching this. Yeah. <laughs> little Marky Park. Okay. I feel like it's little Marky Con all over again. I don't know. If we need to see the little baseball yeah. skit he's doing there. All right. Yeah. That uh, one's so well. Long. And, and well, Steve was saying that the audio is bad on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that was the video bad. Yeah. That was the video bad. Yeah. Huh? Uh, oh, that's, yeah, yeah. So they get to see the cultural appropriation, but also the audio is terrible. So that's mm -hmm. all. Yeah. Seems like uh, it was a win-win on that one. Yeah. Um, it's awful. I but yeah, hate, we, I hate Mark. we watched it seven times. I hate little Marky. You do? I hate him. You love to hate uh, him, right? Well, the thing is, like, it makes me think about when I was a kid. I, I was raised in the church, so we I listened to a lot of Christian rock. Oh, did you? So, oh, okay. like, like Michael. He kind of reminds me of like a fat Michael W. Smith. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, he looks yeah. like a bit yeah. like that. Yeah, but I remember there was always a kid who could like do Donald Duck in grade school or something, and it was just like no one told him no because he had this <laughs> audience of like a captive audience of people starving for some sort of religious entertainment. And he just made it, it was like finding a gimmick like uh, anybody. And but I think he ripped off Lil Marcy, because like, he's Lil Marky. Yeah. Lil Marcy was... Who's Lil Marcy? Lil Marcy came before him. I think she was in the 70s. She was a puppet. Yeah, yeah. It, was like, it was a okay. ventriloquist, and she had like But they all Lil had Marcy. albums. He had an album, too, where he did a, a, a Lil Marcy song called Diary of an Unborn Child. Uh, where yeah. it was like, yeah, he was talking about how... Uh, I'm growing fingernails today, and you know, then he's like, I hope my mommy doesn't abort me, and he kind of had yeah. this whole shtick, so he released albums, I think he was based out of Illinois, but traveled around, that was taped in, I think, Florida, Florida. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, didn't, is he alive now? Like, no, no, he passed away a few years ago, I think, but yeah, yeah. we tried calling him, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. we tried finding him, yeah, but Lil he's Marky gone. Khan, well, maybe we'll, just, we'll do a reunion of the convention, I would like to invite everybody who's watching, this. yeah, oh, what if we made We're, Lil Marky Khan, like, a thing with, like, and there's, like, oh. 500 people show up to <laughs> Lil Marky Khan, that would be great, oh, what we if all we watch did it, it seven times, and, and we rent out, like, a, like, a Madison Square Garden, or yeah, that's like, what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, start big. <laughs> you know, start big. It'll be the fire festival of video <laughs> conventions. The downside of that, it could be yeah. like the Lebowski thing. Like Lebowski was cool, but now like people dress up as Lebowski and it gets a little annoying. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You yeah. want to keep little Marky. You don't want to. Um... Well, there's an ever-present danger that he'll be too commercialized. <laughs> so I think you're right. That's a great cautionary. Well, task. yeah, <laughs> let's keep him small and manageable. Yeah, a good we, idea. We have 18 more videos to get. <laughs> okay, to let's right go. Now. We've only gone through three. And we're 26 oh, minutes man. into Oh, this I think thing, we should so. get to this. So we worked at a college uh, TV station. Steve, you had a show on there. Joe and I had shows on there. It's called TV10. And this is a compilation of a bunch of stuff we all did on TV10. Yeah, it was like their closed circuit, the college station where we would like... Just the dorms, I think. Yeah, it was just the dorms would just see it. We would just like shoot videos and, and try to make people laugh. I loved it. The, it was a great yeah. oh, it was, sort of... That was more of my college than college was. Yeah, like, absolutely. I got shitty grades in college. Like, and we went, yeah. But then like TV 10 was like, oh, we could just do this show. And I think we can all agree that like our professors were like, were dog shit at our school. <laughs> but they, they, we had these playgrounds that we could play in. It was, uh, you know, we had like TV 10 and it was like, School newspaper and like other things like radio station. Well, Eau Claire is also a weird city. Yeah, yeah. Being in that city was amazing. Yeah. That now time. that's where like Bon Iver is from, and it's like a cool yeah. music town. At the time, no, not really. It was, but there was plenty of opportunity to. No, be. but it was different than was other di cities in Wisconsin, yes. though. Yeah, and it felt yeah. There was I don't know if I'd call it hip, but it was sort of like a unique environment there. It was a different vibe. And what I know about your involvement on TV10 is that you um, did a music show yeah. with our buddy Eric. Yes. But you also were involved sort of behind the scenes because everybody had to do like sound for some things. Yeah. And, and so uh, we had a, an event called Grown Man Sleepover and we watched a video that we all <laughs> loved called the TV10 Rap. 
<laughs> that a very ambitious guy uh, wanted to be a singer and perform pop star named Mark Avery did. And uh, kind of like the Bieber of our generation. I, I think, think that's what he wanted He's to be. Bieber yeah. of our college yes. experience. <laughs> yeah. So let's just watch yeah. the TV 10 wrap and then we'll show you the big reveal at the end that we were all stunned by. Mm. I don't think you'll be as stunned no, as no, we are, we but, <laughs> but we were very stunned yeah. by it. JC was very stunned. Oh, we're watching the whole thing. Huh? Uh, you queued it up to the No, this yeah. is the only part oh, with really? the credits. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. The, the Abe, Abe stuff. stuff. And when? Oh, May 1998. 11th anniversary coming up soon. <laughs> You're uh. right. Hey, hey, yo, hey, yo, yo. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, yo, yo. My name is Mark and I'm here to say, singing you a rap about TV 10 today. Oh, that's what you asked. What is TV 10? It's a TV station on channel 1010. We play movies, shows much more. Broad, cast that will make you want to roar. Think that you can watch right from your dorm? The smoke where you're not dissolved. afraid to be hit by any so yo. TV 10 plays shows and escapades, the commanding force of 50s and yeah. yay, yay. Oh, you can do backflips. That was yeah. Yeah. Now, don't get in our way, cause we're the best station it every is. single day. I think Mark lives in New York. Yeah, he's, actually, he's in, I think um, we should have him on the show. New Jersey. Yeah. I, I wish you talked to him about this. Yeah, he's he's going for it. I think it. he's a math teacher yeah. now. Yeah, uh, but I bet he can still do the splits. I would bet. <laughs> Goes for it, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. Two ten rap. And this is rap three. He did two raps before this. <laughs> this is part yeah. two. <laughs> yeah, this is like more elaborate. Yo, listen up, I'll tell you about more. six thousand shows from the student body core core. Keep it, keep it watching while I tell you while I'm walking and singing and talking to the TV center rocket. I'm Mark and I went to the park. It was kind of dark when I thought I saw a shark. Huh? Park said the lark who was dark in our park when he talked the park from the park in the park. <laughs> well, my name is Mark. Mark. But it was Mark! <laughs> great breath Rap control. Though. Rappers always do talk about themselves. But you're, like, you're watching this, you're like, oh, the production's so great. Like, who's behind the production? Uh, I like, know. Who's the, well, who's, I want to like, know who the technical director is. Like, who's the, who's the, yeah. Oh, yeah, the production values are pretty outstanding. It's great craftsmanship, I think. I mean, the song's the great, yeah. But, but who's in charge of the technical part of it? conclusion, always a conclusion. This, this is the end of my discussion. discussion. You are a special audience. audience. Part, part of which, which makes us excellent. excellent. Backflip. Oh. Collapsing. Look at this. Technical assistant. Oh. Steve Hyden. Oh. <laughs> there it is. Yep. One of my great uh, credits of my life. Do you actually put that on your resume? No. Well, I did for a while, yeah. It was <laughs> like the first maybe 10 or 15 years of my career. When that reveal came up, yeah. we were all watching that at, the, at this get together we had, and then you had no recollection of working on that at I all. I still don't, you know, it was crazy, it was college, you know? Yeah, yeah, wild times. Who knows? But okay. uh, it was, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a hell of a time. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I would have signed up for that because Mark had done like a couple other raps, and yes. when I heard there was gonna be a new rap. Rap you know, three. Sort of like, if, it's like if you find out that Spielberg or Scorsese is making a movie, like you want to be you a sign PA. up for yeah. it immediately. Yeah. Exactly. You uh, want to be the technical director. You exactly. want to be <laughs> on Spielberg's new movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So I think that. What was, does a technical director do, Steve? <laughs> um, well, uh, I don't remember at all. But I'll just say that uh, I, I was in charge of all. Did you of, write the raps? No, oh, okay, I, all did. the video okay. toaster graphics. I think I was. In charge okay, of. like Ladies, the woman spinning. spinning yeah, and that the, was me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So also college. So I feel like this show is only interesting to us. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else gives. A I think shit. lots of Eau Claire people that went to school in the late two thousand, uh, late nineties. Okay. will enjoy this. Okay, show. good. Well, well, everybody will relate. All right, great. That. We'll have seventy three hits on this then, right? <laughs> okay, great. Um, so uh, we had something every single night of the week. We, Nick and I were in a dorm, and then Steve was in a different dorm. But and there was another guy in our dorm every single night at around one a.m. Yeah, we would have something we called it the sacred hour. And we would watch Jenny Jones. We'd watch uh, Comic View. Comic, Comic View. View. On BET. And we would watch uh, Step, by, Step Steps, by Step. Two episodes of Step by Step. So we'd go from like 1 a.m. until 3 a.m. every single night, Monday through Thursday. Yeah. We would watch this every. You would come up like right. <laughs> Right the front desk would buzz and be like, oh, 1 a.m., here come our guests. <laughs> and I had, 1 a.m. every single night. And I had like an 8 a.m. class I did too, too. every day. Never made Exactly, it. yeah. No, exactly. I and so I, and I got like a C minus in the class. <laughs> it didn't matter, yeah. This was the real class. It so. was, exactly. We're not talking about like whatever bullshit class we were taking at that time. We don't remember yeah. that, but we're here 
twenty five years later talking about this. So, uh, but I, so this is this is kicking <laughs> off the the Sacred Hour set right here. So <laughs> oh, I'm going to kick things off with the Jenny Jones. Uh, maybe a familiar friend. I don't know. We'll see if you. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to see this. Let's see if uh, I'm excited. You remember this. a certain? It's like uh, this is your life. You all back in a second. When we come back, we'll see all the makeovers. But first, a performance by the Aphrodisiacs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to see the makeovers after this. Who are the Aphrodisiacs? Her well, house band. Her house band. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It was just like filler. Yeah. It was just filler. <laughs> and right now they play here in Chicago Wednesdays at the Cubby Bear and Thursdays at Drink. Here are the Aphrodisiacs. Yeah. <laughs> at the Cubby Bear. So they did 70s songs where they think Afro. Yep. Yep. Okay, got it. Yep. So that was the Aphrodisiacs. But do you remember the Aphrodisiacs? We would always get really excited when the Aphrodisiacs run. <laughs> because it was such a filler thing. It had nothing to do with the episode. Right. Yeah. And all of a sudden she's like, all right, we got the Aphrodisiacs here. And I love it too. It's like you know, playing the Cubby Bear, which might have sounded exotic to me at the time. <laughs> yeah. But this is like a shitty bar across it's the like street from Wrigley Field. Yeah, exactly. It's an Wrigley Field. And I bet like the bass guitarist was like the production assistant on the show. So <laughs> like, she's yeah, like, this gig. Yeah, yeah, she's just like, yeah, we have some time to kill like this episode's gonna be weak this is so. a daytime talk show in the vein of oprah a lot of them were chicago based at the time yeah she was another one but jenny jones though like it was such a f nobody talks about jenny everybody talks about oprah no. uh, oprah's still relevant but like, jerry springer jerry yeah. springer all that's like still a thing maury jenny, but jones. jenny jones yeah like, she's a you know it should be like a documentary about Jenny Jones. I yeah. would watch the shit. Well, she was like, you, you, know, you know what her, what everybody remembers her for now is that she had a guest on that uh, she reintroduced them, and that night after they introduced oh, each other, right. there's a murder, and she feels really guilty about that. That's like right. She she uh, essentially caused a murder because oh. they, yeah, but the aphrodisiacs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on the plus that's true. side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. You gotta think the good with the bad. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. So that would kick off the sacred hour usually. Jenny Jones. Yeah, yeah. Jenny yeah. Jones would kick things off. Yeah. And then uh, uh oh, but then this was oh, I'm excited about this one. So you, you know what's coming next, right? Oh, I think I do. Is yeah. this uh like, oh, I won't even say I'm it. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play the intro for this is the main event of Monday through Thursday. Uh where some people were yeah. studying, cramming yeah. for a test. <laughs> We would just uh, get done watching Jenny Jones. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, there it goes. Fort Washington. <laughs> yeah, it's Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, it's Wisconsin, too. Uh, it's a cost you would. Will there ever be second time around? I don't care, Foxy. Still there. would. Oh, yeah, yeah. Keenan? I'm not a big fan of Keenan. I like Keenan. God uh, damn, I think I Sasha Mitchell. I met him uh, at a convention two Did you years really? ago, yeah. Uh, he signed my step-by-step. -step. JT. Uh, JT. Brandon Paul. Uh, you don't like him? Uh, yeah. Like, oh, oh now, Lakin. Now we're talking. Lakin. Christine Lakin. Oh, I love Lakin. Uh, oh, Josh Burn. Burn. Uh, <laughs> Castile. <laughs> for Castile. Barry Marshall Hillen. Rosen Farb. Nadler, the roller coaster by the ocean. Fake look, at that, look at that ocean fake is waves. so fake. Yeah, <laughs> and the mountains in the background of Wisconsin. Oh, <laughs> yep. yeah, yeah. The mountains of Wisconsin. It took place in Port Washington, Wisconsin, <laughs> in a place yeah. that doesn't exist. Oh, so, man. but but the the Speaking one of the great songs, by the way. Yeah, raspy. Step by step, day by day. That, uh, it almost sounded like an Otis, actually. Oh, an Otis, pretty, Otis yeah. yeah, the uh, yeah the guy. Um, so. Josh Byrne, I remember you were always like, Josh Byrne. You were a Byrne. defender. Well, we hated Josh Byrne. He was Brendan on the show. Yeah. And he was just such a nothing character. In fact, I think like five episodes in, or five seasons in, they, they didn't kill him off, but they just like didn't, didn't invite back. him back. He yeah. just like It'd disappeared. It like every third show, he'd just like pop up. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awkward. You could tell like the producers didn't like him either. And yeah. we were not big fans, but you always defended him. Well, he's reminded me of myself at yeah. his age. He's very, you know, so, you know. Well, little, uh, he, here he is. I'll just show awkward. you. This is him. This is grown up, Josh this is, Byrne. Well, no, this is this is Josh Byrne from the show. <laughs> he does kind of look like you a little yeah, bit. He does. I, yeah. did, I did. I did just some Google image searches, and I found a more recent picture of him. Uh, this is 15 years ago. Yeah. This next one, 
Uh, hold on, there it is. So he, That's he's like, now? yeah, yeah. Look at him. Like, so he's like at no, no, that was 15 fairs? years ago. Okay. And and now I'm going to show you burn today. Okay. And I guess he's like big into like environmentalism and like he's he's actually very successful. This is him right now. Really? This is Josh That's Byrne burn? right now. Yes. He looks distinguished. Yeah, and he's like the spokesman for this environmental. He's not wearing company. a generic shirt that says Hoopster on it. Anymore. Yeah, exactly. No, wow. that was that, that was looking for the Hoopster episode. Yeah. Yeah. There's one episode where. <laughs> wow. Uh, do you remember the Hoopster episode? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brendan was wearing a shirt that said Hoops. It had a <laughs> basketball and going through a hoop, and it said Hoopster on it. And we've been looking for that Hoopster shirt for so if long. If anybody could find that, please send <laughs> in the Hoopster shirt. Hoopster. Clown dolls, and then, yeah. That was a big Wisconsin thing. Hoopster, you know. Just we all generic shirts that had yeah. sports on it, yeah. you know. But yeah. like, so there's so many Wisconsin sitcoms. Like, so sitcoms that took place in Wisconsin. Happy sure, Days, like, Laverne and Shirley, that 70s show. Perfect all Strangers. Them. Was that? Wait, no, no, that was Chicago. 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 Yeah. yeah, I was because his name is Larry Appleton, and he's, uh, from, and he, and he's from Madison. Oh, oh is in he? The show? Yeah. In the show? Yeah. How do you know okay. that? How do you know that? Because how I do you know that Larry Appleton's from <laughs> Madison? <laughs> well, I, I, I'm not a hundred percent on that, but I'm pretty sure he's from Madison. And it would make sense that he would live in Chicago. He's from um, Madison. Okay, so. Uh, I, I, we we have to talk about Full House, the uh, the Mike Love episode. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, which one? There's like a bunch. Is yeah, the, the or the, specifically our the favorite. Telethon episode. The Telethon, the telethon yeah, yeah, episode absolutely. is okay. our favorite. Yeah. yeah, it's the best one. Because there's and also the episode like where they went to the Rose Bowl, and they were on stage with the. Beach oh, we know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we should say like I didn't watch Full House growing up. I think you were a little bit younger, so you did. Yeah. We didn't, so we, all through college and post-college is when we caught up on Family Matters, Step by yeah. Step. We never watched these shows contemporarily, so um, it was kind of fun to go watch these later and catch up on all of them. But we actually did a thing for Entertainment Weekly where we watched every Full House episode in a row, yeah. three and a half days, and then made a journal of it. And went crazy. And went nuts. Went nuts, yeah. But the telethon episode was a bright spot. Yeah, okay, so uh, we'll just show that. We'll just show this hilarious scene with Mike Love. Who really? No, 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 we're gonna watch the, the ending of the episode. I'm singer, your drum. Right. I'm gonna start the song. A little on the pause, a little drum roll. Got it, time. Little He's great at enunciation. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Love. <laughs> Look at his world set jacket. We, it's the We Love Our Children we Telethon 90. <laughs> That's what he sounds like. When sound loud. Can you rewind? Uh, rewind that. Yeah. When he, he sound goes, he loud, goes from, bragger. He goes from mumble, like, all right, I'm going to start off, you get in the drum, and I'm going to fill. And then he goes, when sound, and he sounds like he's 19 again. <laughs> that blonde skeleton, Mike Love. He always looks like the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's yeah. his voice. <laughs> And what was the name of Uncle Jesse's band? Oh, the Rippers. Yeah. yeah. I love that it's like, this is them recording pet sounds, I think, right? Ever since we're going to start touring, we've had problems like this with drummers. What? <laughs> Just mumbled that line. Ours is really oh, hard touring. Look at, oh, uh, they're pointing. Uh, oh, look at, they're going. <laughs> what are they pointing at? Oh, the uh, Raiders uh, cheerleaders are at. And why did he come over to play guitar after he played drums? Why would they switch so him Stamos out? So Stamos can show that he does everything. <laughs> and, and he can show off that he's friends with the Beach Boys. Yeah, too. exactly. <laughs> oh. oh, look at, he's friends with them. He plays. Well, look at the end of the show. Let's check oh, the base. Did they get it? Did they reach the goal? They got it. For the fake charity. <laughs> the fake charity that didn't actually give people any money. No, it just made uh, uh, Miller Boyette <laughs> richer, right? Yeah. Hey, Look at Stephanie's uh, sweater. Friends. Can I just do a shout out to Candace Cameron? I uh, wrote a fan letter to her. Oh, wait, we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that there's Everyone's that. Everyone's in Ringo Starr trying to have problems like this with drummers. Yeah, that was his line read. You got you have you, people watching this have got to watch the telethon episode of Full House. Yeah. It's it's number one favorite. Season Full House three, episode. I think. Yeah. If you watch oh. it, like a lot of times, you might figure out what Mike Love is saying in that <laughs> episode. 
Like that Ringo Starr line, I have no idea. It's what so said. chock full of just, just fantastic. And Louis says, "Well, I'd love to this thing be true to school if we can get those cheerleaders out here again." Yeah. And then, when <laughs> Sam Loudbringer, you know, he's like, nineteen again. Just that unnatural. So you wrote a one. fan letter to Candace Cameron, I though. I did. I did. I wrote a can- uh, well, yeah, when I was eleven. Oh. And I, I, you know, I, I had a crush on her, but I also wanted to hang out with Kurt Cameron. Okay. Oh, I, so if, if I, you know, two birds, one stone. Exactly. If I date Candace, I can also hang out with Kirk. Do you think I, that letter still exists somewhere? Do you think it? Oh uh, no, I don't think so. You think, think they probably gone. burned well, it? Yeah, it's probably immediately. Candace's people. I gotta say though, uh, you know, I'm married and Candace Cameron is married, but Candace Cameron's looking pretty good these days. She is. I just want to say I'm, stro- I'm saying she's that respectfully. She's in a lot of the Hallmark movies nowadays, and, and she's in Fuller House. And Fuller House, of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, all Candace right, Cameron. so we're we're we're, uh, we're forty three minutes into the show, and we still have so many fucking videos to get. Are through. we gonna do more TGIF? Yes, let's do it. Okay. So do you remember there was one day where we were, we were flipping through channels? This is when we roomed together, yeah. and uh, we we're like, let's watch a family uh, Family Matters episode because we never actually watched an entire Family Matters episode. Yeah. You know which episode I'm gonna say, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's burned in my brain. Okay, so I found out some new information about this ep- episode. So, oh. But we'll just play what we remember from it first. Okay. And then, yeah. And we um, did a complete rewatch of Family Matters. And I, I remember getting to this episode, too. And... Yeah. Oh, oh, and by the way, the only video I could find is somebody that shot this episode on their phone. They're shrunken. And you see the energy guy down there? <laughs> Fruit rings. This aired on BET? Yeah. I, I guess so. I guess yeah. They must have picked it up for syndication. <laughs> Way to go, Steve. Oh, you know what, girl? Oh, it's nice to have the closed caption there, isn't it? <laughs> Me too, Steve. Steve, I've got a confession to make. Watch this. The, yeah. the sounds you hear people off. <laughs> I gotta admit, I, I didn't want you to move in with us. Oh, orchestration. Laughing at me, I weep openly. I, I did. I didn't mind that. Yeah. yeah. At the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like still, and then they ended. Then they ended the episode. Still shrunken. They just stayed shrunk. So I they guess. stayed shrunken. Yes. And they ended the episode that way. Yeah. And they rolled credits, and that was it. it and was the like, next week they were fine. You yeah, just exactly. Have to assume that they got big somehow. But they were. But it was like. Fuck you, audience. We don't care. We don't have to resolve this. We don't. We, don't get, we, we know you're still gonna watch the show. It doesn't matter that we don't conclude this. Next well, week we'll be in a pirate ship. So you know. <laughs> Maybe it was a choice. Maybe they were like, uh, you know, we're not gonna, you know, because there's some movies that do that sometimes. I feel like where they'll put vital action off screen and they let you imagine how they got back to full size. Oh, right. It yeah. leaves you to do that. Yeah, well, that's what uh, Miller Boyette were thinking. I, f- I found out with this episode that, um, so I looked on, I was looking on YouTube and a guy, I'm going to read exactly what he wrote. He said, message from the guy, this is the message from the guy who uploaded the ending. He said, here's the ending to the Family Matters episode. So the in, in uh, syndication, they did not Play. The they did not resolve it, but there was a, an ending. Oh, he right. said, "Yeah, yeah." He said, uh, uh, "Little big guy in which he in which Nickelodeon had cut it out on modern TV airings by that stupid split s- credit screen with the promo." So they had like you know how they do the split credit you know the, the credits roll yeah, while yeah. You know, like they're trying to promote something else. They had that in the background, so you never really get to see it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they like. Sh- Shrunk, shrunk it up. So I have the ending. Do you want to see the ending? Yes. Oh, I've never seen this. Holy shit! This is like, make it big again. It's yeah. like twenty years in the making. I bet not a lot of people have seen this. Yeah. No. No, there were seven hundred and forty views on this. I still think article and. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So this, is act, this is Act Four. Ah. 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 What happened? He's Richie. Wow. 
He looked at the camera. <laughs> Morning, Green Bay. Yeah. Yeah, I just have more. An- he answered some questions and he posed more questions. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. okay. So we can't can't go that much longer. Okay. Either. Oh boy, yeah. we got it. We got to. Uh, what's what's so much the? Uh, okay, so th- uh, I want to show the rich little video. Okay. Do, do you have any thoughts about the uh, ending of the? Uh... Well, yeah, I just feel like it. Yeah, it it solved some mysteries, but then. It, it brought up a huge mystery with the cat at the end. The oh. world would be in if, if somebody found a house cat that, that was that big, it would have repercussions throughout the entire world. Well, then, yeah. does the cat like slaughter the family? Probably, or? yeah. <laughs> yeah. In but, all but, I, yeah but I don't, I don't think. Yeah, they're just like fuck it. We don't care. Like, we'll let your imagination run wild. Yeah. Well, um, you know. Okay. Big ups to family matters for some narrative bravery there. Narrative yeah. storytelling. Yeah, bravery. that's what that was. Now, now we're going to segue into. Um, we're done with the, the sacred hour. Now okay. we're going to segue into your impressions. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this will be okay. a professional critic that I'm sure you want out there. Yes. Okay, so first of all... Kind of a side hustle for me, really. Oh, but. I'm just going to play this video here first. We, we've played this rich little video before. Like, how, how much time do you think we have on the storage? Yeah? Do you think we're going to run out? Okay. The episode cuts short. Uh, it's, sorry. Yeah, th- there's a chance this episode could... Cut short because we're running out of storage on our iPad. So, um, anyway, what, what was I saying? I don't know. You're a mid burp and you're about to say, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, This yeah, is rich, a rich little. little. Rich little we found a cassette tape of Andrew's yeah, yeah. machine tapes. Okay. There's a VCR game. A VCR game. You're old. You're old man. Shake rich little does impressions. You're walking. you're walking with a cane. 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 I'm going to a sponge. I'm going to a that about wraps it up, gang. We hope you enjoyed him playing rich little So, so until, until next time, all I've got to say is. Uh, so <laughs> kind of like a drink off thing. Yeah, it was. Yeah. All right, so that was that was Rich Little's. Yeah. Uh, we, we've had that video for a long time. One of the greats. And, and you had a. Uh, a did you have it? Yeah, yeah, I think it was a cassette tape where he would give your outgoing answering machine. So he yeah. would do it as Daffy Duck or Porgy Pig or, yeah. you know, John Wayne or you know, all that stuff. And we were like, oh, we should do our own version of this. And you had always, whenever you would call and, like, I wouldn't pick up the phone, you'd leave a voicemail uh, as, like, George Harrison. Yeah, it was often the, the ghost of George Harrison. Yeah, or, like, you'd do Gordon Gecko from Wall Street. Like, you would do different, <laughs> like... And you would always do different impressions. Well, yeah, because I know you like comedy. Yeah. Yeah. So I figured. You <laughs> I know, like to laugh. Was yeah. The ghost of George Harrison. <laughs> yeah. But not, but not even that good. That was much worse than no, that. Really? That was pretty good. Actually. Well, would, I don't. I don't want you to do any impressions okay. right now because I I queued up a couple. So we what oh. we, what we what we did <laughs> was um, I think that we got that kiss. You got that cassette tape at the same time Steve was leaving me voicemail messages, and it was like, oh, Steve should do his own voicemail message tape. 
So yeah. you came out to New York. This is probably like 2005, 2006, 2007. Earlier than that, I think. Really? Yeah, it was before I met my wife. Yeah, yeah. It was like it was like oh three or oh four. Yeah, it's probably two, yeah okay. I got like, yeah. like, like well, when let's I was get single. I, People yeah. at home really want to know what year this was. So yeah. Let's, uh, let's <laughs> it, it was. <laughs> it was like fifteen years ago. <laughs> yeah. This is another instance of me coming to New York and like never leaving the apartment. Just yes. yeah. You complained about that. Actually. So so <laughs> so we sat down. We we were going to record a hundred and one. Answering machine, answering machine messages. Yeah, with fun, and we called you Funny Man Steve Hyde. Yes, and uh, I'll, I'll show you here the, the uh, this was we we came up with the cover for the album. Um, oh no, no, it's, it's wrong tape, wrong tape, wrong tape, wrong tape. I believe we um, put you in Groucho Marx glasses. Yes, Groucho Marx. And you had a cut phone like this, and we actually sold these too on CD. No, I think we made like fourteen dollars. Yeah, on yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, which you know, I mean, really, you know, selling any kind of physical media these days is, is that's true is an achievement. Yeah. You know, so, but this is like, yeah, this I'll is pre YouTube. This is, so this is, <laughs> this is the album cover. Calling all pop culture vultures. I forgot. Yeah. One hundred and one celebrity pressures. We actually did hundred and one, and coming up here is going to be the first. Well, alrighty then. This is Ace Ventura, the pet detective, and I'm not home. Re he healy, I'm not. I'm out hunting for your parrot or dog or cat. Leave a message, and I'll find it for you. Smokey! <laughs> Not Ace Ventura. That was the mask. <laughs> but <laughs> there no. are, the roles you always had to say, this is. Like, it's, it's a good impression, you don't have to say who it is. Well, yeah, but, but Rich, Rich Little, Little did that. He was like, oh, I'm Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> well, I'm Ronald Reagan. You know, like... Why do you have to say who it is if it's a good impression? They never said their name. No, no. Well, that's what Ronald Reagan does, though. He's constantly introducing himself oh, to people. Yeah, I mean, nobody would actually say that. People are constant. <laughs> celebrities constantly saying their own names because they're full of themselves. Okay, so then we did 101 of these. and it, Over two days. An actual 101. Yeah. Uh, here, here's one of my personal favorites. <laughs> I'll, I'll just leave, I'll let it be a surprise when you hear it. That's a great picture of you. <laughs> <laughs> this is Michael Jackson. If this is Dirty Diana or Billy Jean, you can beat it. The rest of you, I don't want to stop till I get enough. Leave a message, and me or Bubbles will get back to you. <laughs> well, that's did a great job on it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. If they were not written, it'd be like, okay, Michael Jackson, you back. Uh, wait, 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 let me think for a second. Okay, <laughs> you're probably like Dirty Diana, Bubbles. Okay, okay so go. so I think we got through maybe sixty-five of the yeah. answer machines messages and then you started to get mad yeah uh, was, <laughs> throat was getting a little sore you were also being very uh bossy i believe real and phil specter you're making of. me like do multiple takes yeah yeah and, i know uh, I, it was probably like one in the morning at that point i do have some regrets about real the way i handled master. a lot of it but ultimately i feel like you know this is like you know they show the beatles arguing in the studio but they made beatles albums yeah it's so part of the creative process yeah. so you gotta have some tension and, and, and i feel like we do have some footage of that i think you grabbed a camera while yeah. steve and i were arguing to record yeah, our fight. That? I, I don't have that okay. it, it's somewhere in a mini mini dv over there that'll be our <laughs> let it, that'll be our let it be but uh, yeah. yeah but but you were like why does it have to be 101 why can't it just be 75 <laughs> Voicemails. It's, and, it's always and, 101. 101's the common. on Polish jokes, it's 101. That's an industry standard for 101 is, answering machine. 101 is, is the comedy number. That's right. the comedy number. 101 whatever. No. So we pushed through it, but you so, were happy for a while. So, like, at, at about, like, song number, or not song, uh, voicemail okay. message number. 65, yeah. you got mad. Yeah, you, and had, you let me slack off for a few of them. And th this is one where you slacked off. Yeah. Yeah. The, this, is one, this is one where he totally, he completely phoned it in, and I didn't argue with him. Hey, this is the Fonz, and I want you to leave a message. Hey. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, okay, that was good. That was good. <laughs> At that point, you had to switch. It's a, it's a it's, you were, it's good you cup, bad cup. <laughs> you had to be good cup for a little bit there. Uh, uh, this is the Fonz. Hey, I guess he had the A in the hoots. Yeah, it would be like, hey, I'm at Mel's diner, but I gotta, I gotta snap my fingers and get the jukebox. <laughs> exactly. That's what it normally. The other one, like dirty. This is Dirty Diana. If yeah. you're not Dirty Diana, tell Ralph like, Ralph to leave me a message. You know, no, it was just like, hey, I'm the Fonz. Oh, hey. yeah. uh, but yeah, then you turn the corner. We finished 100. Miles. I mean, I feel like every great artist has like those big career <laughs> albums that, where they don't care anymore, and that yeah. was like yeah. my equivalent. What about that. Uh, for the Patreon of uploading the whole album? 
Oh, we should do that, yeah. actually. I, I have so many... Then, but then you also did uh, ringtones, too. Remember when ringtones <laughs> was a thing? We did Funny Man doing ringtones. And we never even released that. No, like, that's that was, true. Oh, we should, we, we, we should release that's the ringtones. the basement tapes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for uh, Funny oh, Man. That'll be for $10 Patreons. I'll yeah. upload all those into a... Um, but you didn't I, I really mean, like doing this. This was just something that made us laugh. And then we took it probably too far with the whole Funny Man thing. When it had you perform live. Well, that was the thing. It was like, after he did that, it was like, so we started doing found footage at that point, and yeah. we're like, oh, we have this, like, format that we could, we have this thing that we do this show, we should have Funny Man open for us, so we had... And not tell anybody that, uh, yeah. what you were, really. So, so I think, I, I think that you were coming in the next day for a show in Eau Claire, and... You and I, I picked you up in Appleton, I yeah. in Appleton at the time, and we drove to Eau Claire, and yep. this this afternoon TV show wanted to do an interview about found footage. Local news show, yeah. yeah it was like a local news show, yeah. and uh, they they uh, wanted to talk about found footage, but then I, at the last, when I showed up, I was like, oh, I brought Funny Man with me, too. And <laughs> she was like, yeah, sure, he can yeah, come on the show, too. Bring Funny Man on. Yeah. And, I, and I had the glasses on and the nose. Yeah. And so this didn't bad And eye. I think Joe was trying to embarrass you, but you ended up embarrassing him at one point. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I was like, I was stone-faced the entire time. Yeah. Like, you were the star of the show on this right. whole thing. So I edited together just your parts from it, and... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you actually embarrassed Joe here. Yeah, exactly. I, I was actually embarrassed while you were. You were cringing. Huh? From the PPAU TV 13 Eau Claire, this is News Center 13 at noon. Western Wisconsin's first choice. Think bad home videos you and your friends made in seventh grade, and then think about the prospects of seeing them broadcast on TV and shown in public. And you have the Found Footage Festival. Here to tell us more about the event is Joe Pickett, one of the founders and a UW Eau Claire grad, as that's well right. as the opening act, the Funny Man, who also went to UW Eau Claire. Oh, tell he, us a little he bit waves about funny what too. What you expect, what you'll be doing. Well, I'm a master impressionist. I can do any voice, any celebrity. I don't even have to know the celebrity very well. I just have an instant recall. I can do a little bit of John Wayne. <laughs> I can do Jimmy Stewart. I can do a Jimmy Stewart. Do you have a request, actually? Is any, uh, I don't need, you know. Anybody. Any. Jessica Simpson, maybe? Hi, I'm Jessica Simpson. I was married to Nick Lachey. I'm Jessica Simpson. There you go. There you I've go. never did that one before. So, First time. Have an unusual request. You do President Bush, of course. Do pre oh, which one? Which well, me just did. President, I suppose. <laughs> I do actually. I'm, I'm a little bit better at the first one. I like have a mustache going over your mouth. Oh, man. I'm George W. Bush and uh, <laughs> I strategery and I I'm not you know I'm not very smart but you know George W. Bush. Thank you. That's my name. Yeah. Thank you. So in addition, obviously, to the fine impressions here, you also have a lot of uh, other things you want to tell us a little bit more about what people nah. would expect. They come on down. Just a mishmash of uh, unintentionally, but. Hilarious. Boring. Really Boring. I just got to know this guy today. This guy is a cut up, and you want to know how I know that? Takes one to know one. Check, please. <laughs> All right. It looks like a great time, and that is tonight from 7 to Check, 9. please, was your catch. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Oh. Uh, yeah. yeah. It just took over. It's, a, it's like the, you know, for you know, believers. It's like the Holy Spirit taking over yeah. you as a believer in Funny Man. He just took over. Well, wow. we, but we ended up, we did the show that night. We did two shows that night. Yeah, yeah. we did. And uh, the I people think, that came down because they saw that on TV, they were fans of Funny Man. It was like a bunch of, like a, like a bunch of middle aged, middle aged women were like, yeah. they came down and they all got their picture taken with you. <laughs> That's right. You really stole the show that whole day. So right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show just an excerpt from Funny Man's uh, live show. And uh, just so you can see what the live show actually looked like. And um, a I, lot of the audience didn't get it. No. No, they were so. It, it went on for so long. Applause. How many people have seen It's a Wonderful Life? I've <laughs> <laughs> seen it. Seen it's a Wonderful Life. Well, perhaps you remember this classic scene. The money's not here. <laughs> it's in his place and, and in your place and on three store. It's a Wonderful Life. He never or, said, yeah, that's the actual know. card response. <laughs> yeah. It's not like me. My name is John Wayne, and I started in lots of Westerns, and I'm a tough guy. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> 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 a contemporary impression too. Oh, what a also got the television. I loved all the shows that we all loved, and uh, perhaps you remember a show called Who's the Boss? Angela. <laughs> Manga. I'm Tony Danza. Are you the boss? Are you the boss? Who's the boss over here? <laughs> or perhaps you remember I took a show of mine called Elf about a little little alien. 
And he said things like this. Hey, I'm Elf. Hey, that monster coming over and I just ate a cat. Oh, I kill me. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. Uh, I remember it my nose kept a... falling off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember you were having nose like, problems. I was very yeah. self-conscious about that. It was actually easier that they, that they didn't laugh because I could forget that there was an audience. There. Right, you just got I think, through. I think your head down. Yeah, I think if I had been aware, or you know, if, if they'd been laughing, I would have been freaked out. It's so painful. But so, 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 so I couldn't see them either because they were sitting farther back in the light from my dark. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, but the end of the end of the show, which <laughs> went on for way longer than we had rehearsed, we were like, "Oh, it's gonna be a ten minute, you know, intro for our show. It's gonna be a ten minute opening act." It was like twenty five minutes, I think, by the time it was done, but. Oh, the ending is the best part because you tell, because you, 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 you no, well, you tell oh. us the website, but he also talks shit about Rich Little. Oh yeah, <laughs> and, and it's a fact, rivalry. Yeah, a little bit of a rivalry yeah, there. The celebrity impressionist community. Yeah. Oh, so, wow. so this is the ending. So you're doing a um, lightning round. You're doing the lightning round where you're like trying to do as many impressions as possible. Yeah. That's so what it's we'll, about. It's speed in the impression. Game. <laughs> it's uh, how many can you do? It's not quality. It's no, quantity. Exactly. So, so that's what we're gonna see. We're gonna see the tail end of him doing as okay. many impressions as he this can. This is twenty five minutes. I think, I think it was. Yeah, exactly. I okay. think he, I think he was trying to do seventy over, trying to beat seventy five impressions. Which in, is rich little right? Which is like the, everyone knows that that's though. the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For impressions in an, in an right. hour. So that, that's why he's hurried up here is like he's trying to do as many impressions as possible. <laughs> I think that's what this audience is like right now. <laughs> I like how there weren't that many people at that show. <laughs> we weren't doing great back then, I don't think. Also, he was enjoying his popcorn, though. Yeah, I, I appreciate yeah. that. Also, you said, eat my shit, Rich Little. <laughs> You so told Rich, the gauntlet. I told Rich Little to eat your shit. And he has doing spiteful in that moment. You know, it was yeah. the moment of oh, trying. It was like in your face. Oh, you fucking hated Rich Little. I did. Oh, yeah. I was, Still do. Oh. My hatred of Rich Little powered me to 76 impressions. Uh, to, yeah. To yeah, that's what actually to break the record. Do we want to do the Playboy video to kind of close things out? Because we're at an hour five. I feel like uh, we should play that and do, make a cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's, okay. We'll, we'll, okay, yeah. We'll, we'll cut to that. Okay, all right. So we have a lot of videos by Playboy, and a lot of them we can't play because it's a lot of naked ladies. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. So, so we have this Playboy video here. Ooh la la. And, uh, yeah. Um, and uh, I like where they put the uh, $2 yeah. symbol there. Like, let's nice. put it right on her face. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> That'll move some tapes. <laughs> So this is a, a massage video, but like, I and I watched this and I was like, we can't show this on YouTube. And like, Facebook. It's like, yeah, Facebook and like, yeah, it's gonna, it's, they're naked the entire time. But the, at the end of the videos, they have trailers for other. And the reason Playboy we're showing magazines. this is we have a bit of a history of Playboy magazine. That's so true. We want to show this as a as a window into telling a some some truncated version of your Playboy magazine. So, so what, what I'm going to show you is the uh, promo. Uh, is a promo for uh, another Playboy video. It was the roast for Tommy Chong. <laughs> and But the reason I'm showing it is because the guy who's doing the voiceover says Jerry Seinfeld as Jerry Steinfeld. Right. It's a he sub. says Jerry Steinfeld. So, all right. So what? What year? Uh, 90? Oh, that's later than... You shouldn't get Seinfeld wrong at that. No, exactly. No. <laughs> the martial arts is this. a comedy rose for Tommy Chong. Oh. Starring Richard Belzer. Ron Mac Reagan and Jamie. What? Jerry Steinfeld. <laughs> Dick Sean. Marsha Warfield. This is definitely Steinfeld, Sonny right? White. Jerry Steinfeld. And Playboy's roast host, David Steinberg. Oh, Playboy comedy rose for Tommy Chong. I think that's why you're confused. Yeah. Another sell-through program. Forty dollars. Forty dollars. Yeah. Catalog number five hundred eight. So. Not like it's on Comedy Central and nobody watches it. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so the reason we played that, of course, is because you have the best Playboy story of all time. You talk about it in your book. Yes. Which book is it? Uh, your favorite band is Killing Me. Yes. I tell this story. Um, can you tell a truncated short version? Because we're going to run out of, of storage space. Yeah, this is kind of a long story, but basically, like, when I was 12, I wanted to get... Pl- uh, th- th- this is a Steve Hyden classic, by the way. This is like... <laughs> I, I ask you to tell me the story once a year yeah. because it's so good. But this, is so, like, this is like the radio I can't, edit. Yes. I, I can't really do the whole version but because we don't have much time. But. We're just going to do the Playboy part, but there's so much more to right. this yes. story. Than, okay, but, but anyway. So. so like when I was uh, 12 years old, I wanted to subscribe. I wanted to get access to Naked Women because, you know, this was before the internet. You know, it was like 1990 or so. So uh, I had this bright idea that I was going to sub- subscribe to Playboy magazine. But I was going to... And you were a latchkey kid, I was a which you've already kid. brought up. <laughs> I was a latchkey kid, you know, single mom, so I would get the mail every day. But I still wanted to have a, a fallback uh, if my mom ever found it. So I put it under the name of a guy who used to live in the duplex that we lived in. His name was Dean Hinsky. Yeah. So I filled out this subscription card that I found at Walden Books <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> and I mailed it in. And six weeks later, sure enough, Playboy magazine shows up. Uh, it's uh, Jermaine, no, not Jermaine Jackson. <laughs> Who's Janet Jackson's sister? Latoya Jackson. Latoya Jackson. Jackson. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, and I was just amazed. I was like amazed to see naked women, but I was also more amazed that I pulled this off. I think I was like, more excited about pulling off. Perfect this. crime. Perfect yeah. crime. So my original idea was that I would get a couple issues and then I would cancel the subscription because. I figured I wouldn't have to pay for it if I could just cancel it. However, um, I started getting bills from collection agencies, and I thought it, that was a big deal. I thought, collection agency, this means that eventually someone's going to come to my house, knock on the door, and they're gonna, my mom's going to find out that I'm a pervert. So <laughs> That's what the collection agency would say to your mom. It's exactly. Like, your son I'm is sorry. a pervert. <laughs> Um, so I'm like, I gotta, I gotta get rid of, I gotta get rid of this, this subscription. And and by the way, there's like other things happening in the story, but this is the short version. There's like a subplot that I'm excising involving a broken chair that I was covering up at the same time. And that's a whole other, yeah. And that, that part actually provides the climax of this story that I I won't have time to tell. But anyway, I... Tell it quickly. Can you tell it quickly? Well, like with the woman rolling out of the chair. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Christmas. Well, no, it's too long. Anyway, anyway, so I, so it's, that's in the book, though, right? It's in the people, book. People yeah. can read in the book. So yeah. I uh, was uh, decided. Okay, I gotta write a note where I'm posing as Dean Hinsky, where I'm gonna cancel the subscription. So I decide that uh, I'm gonna write in cursive because that's what adults do. Grown ups do that. Grown ups yeah. do that. <laughs> and uh, but I was also writing it on notebook paper, which is. In retrospect, not a very smart <laughs> idea. You know, that would probably give me a loose way to leaf. Hit. No, not loose leaf. It oh, had no. the fringes on it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Um, and I did, and I wrote the letter several times, and I decided to sign it D Hinsky instead of Dean Hinsky. Oh, D. Adults do that. Yeah. Hinsky. Yeah. Exactly. That should be your like pseudonym. It should be. Like and I don't know where Dean Hinsky is. You should days. actually subscribe to Playboy now under D Hinsky <laughs> and like get them to your house as D. I know because how do you get pornography now? I mean, I, there's no uh, way to do there, it. There's no <laughs> way to do it now. Yeah. Just, you have to still. But now you can be pervert in the privacy of your own home. So yeah. Well, the other thing that was happening too, I, I forgot about this part, is that um, my brother had found out that I was doing this because he had found a bunch of bills in my room. <laughs> so one day he came home from school. Why did you throw those bills away? I, I, this is the, why did I do all of this? <laughs> <laughs> my brother yeah. came home from school one day and he said out of the blue, Hey, Steve, uh, today uh, in class we learned about this thing called mail fraud. And in mail fraud, it, it's where you pose as someone that you're not uh, in order to get something you're not supposed to get. Well, anyway, I got to go. I'll see you later. Oh. So he planted this seed that it's it, very Midwestern, like passive aggressive. Like I'm not gonna actually confront you on this I'm thing. Gonna I'm fuck just gonna with like you. I'm older gonna brother. Fuck with you. Dick oh boy. Yeah. So yeah. So he had me convinced that the feds mm-hmm. were gonna break down my door for mail fraud and and also for being a pervert. So I was very <laughs> scared. I wrote a note and I had a twenty dollar bill, which was a big deal for me, and I like folded it inside the note. And I feel like I, I I remember having to send this in twice because they kept. I have a feeling that like my first twenty dollars was like ripped off at the post office. Oh, for sure. You're not supposed to mail cash. Not no, very yeah. smart. But I did not have a checking account at this time. <laughs> so, long story short, I got away with it. I got away with mail fraud. Oh, it's a perfect I, crime until now. I just had a lot of stress. There was another crime I was committing in my house. 
that I did not get away with. But uh, I talk about that in my book. Yeah. So you can read my, you can buy my book. So how many months did you just get the one issue? I got a couple issues. I, I got like two or three issues. Do you think if you saw those now, they like, all the memories would flood back, or would you still oh, feel yeah. guilty? Do you think about I don't want to feel like guilty. Jackson naked or it was no guilt. It was all just paranoia. About right. Being what what it, what is it like to like be a pervert though? Like I'm just curious. Like, well, like it, as like day to day, like being a pervert. I think it's fine as long as you don't get caught. <laughs> oh, like okay. you know. Oh, that's that's okay. If you're just a pervert and you know, and you're not exposed, <sighs> it's okay. And I was never exposed. They got away with it. Yeah, so this perverse desire to see women naked. It's so gross. Sick. Well, it's like you, it was either that or you watch, you know, the the scrambled Playboy channel oh. where there'd be like occasional. Flash That's what I was yeah, raised on. Actually, channel, yeah. Ch- channel ninety nine. This is a whole like generation. You we know, call them it, the happy nine. It's like you know, like <laughs> like like my son will never know what this is like. He's living in a world of like omnipresent porn, but like in our day, you had to actually seek work it out. for it. You had to be desperate. Oh. To find we went it. to some very low lows exactly. to find it, and yeah, just to see nudity. Now nudity's everywhere. Now nudity is like wallpaper now. Exactly. But back then it was like a precious uh, commodity. Yeah, commodity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. I want to show you. We're gonna end here. I'm surprised this episode <laughs> it's hasn't a terrifying ended yet. Box. I, have you seen this? Is this, of all these videos that we have in here? I think this is the craziest bat shit most unexplainable we were video talking about this this might be the, the, the crown this is the jewel. pinnacle yeah. of like everything here this is baby rapper i want to show it, i'm going to show it to steve first and I'll, yeah you guys have seen it so uh this is a uh, baby rapper oh my god dance along sing along to beatles songs You're big beatles fans with all baby those, rapper all those beatles rap songs yes, yes exactly it makes perfect sense so far so, so here's baby rapper and uh, I've shown this enough, uh, but I usually. If this is your show, first like, episode, it's I think it speaks for itself. Yeah, it's a rapping baby <laughs> who uh, is animated. I, and I think it was using uh, Ally McBeal technology. Oh yeah. From the the rapping baby, so I'm going to show you just the intro for it, where there's no rapping at all in this entire yeah, video. Like, really? Even when rapping baby's on there, there's no rapping at all. It's just that he does hip hop dances. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think, but, yeah. Is there Beatles songs? There's, yes. Oh, yeah, there's Beatles songs. That's the other thing. It's like, did they pay for the licensing on this? Like, there would be so much money for them to... Uh, anyway. Maybe McCartney was just like, oh, for free. <laughs> for free to the baby rapper. Leave a message. <laughs> there it is. Come on, folks. Let's dance along, sing along to Beatles song. I hate his facial expressions. <laughs> there comes the bass. That's it. That's what. That's what this whole video is. It's an hour long of this, of Beatles songs, with baby rapper. <laughs> you can sing along with it. But he's not rapping. <laughs> no, but he is a rapper. Uh, all right, we're gonna call this the show. Oh, <laughs> we're gonna God. end on baby rapper. This is the show. Oh, yeah, so, uh, I'm terrified. What's coming up for you? So, well, we got, you know, I've got a book coming out later this year uh, with my friend Steve Gorman. Book about the Black Crows. Also, just. Lots of other bands that are in that book. I wonder if Baby Rapper does a song about the, does a black crow. Baby Rapper's in there. Uh, got, I'm, I'm What's the book called? The title it's, it's called Hard to Handle. Okay. It's going to be out in September. Great. And uh, I mean, I'm writing a book right now about Radiohead. Oh, great. Are you interviewing uh, members of Radiohead? No, I'm, no I'm, I'm interviewing myself and I'm uh, doing the Tom York voice. Oh, great. Hello, Tom York. Okay, computer. <laughs> Funny man's back. <laughs> Leave a message on my computer. <laughs> okay. I can't do Funny Man. <laughs> no surprises here. Uh, it's a good album, isn't it? I'm um, Tom Sorry to be a creep, but <laughs> leave a message. Oh. I'm just the master. I'm just kid aing you. You uh, know what I mean? <laughs> kid aing you. Kid aing you. Well, don't over it. <laughs> Funny man's bad at works in the streets. I'm just kid aing you. Yeah, good. All right, yeah. thanks for the two All people right. who stayed till the end, and uh, <laughs> wow. we'll see you next time. Good night, everybody. That's all. That's it.